a petition from Kasita, that's Kampala City Traders Association, they are raising a couple of complaints, and it was signed by their chairman, one Dr. Musoke Tadias Nagenda. So let me invite them so we can hear from them. So konsonge nanti kuata gani la wamu gaba suvuze bivina tuega se wamu kasita yuteya kafu ukula bika nchi tutu se dobo ziri afi mtu yambe koko kubanga na njini mfu ya kuate wawunya. I got a letter from the chairman expressing certain grievances that they do have as traders regarding taxation and several other issues as they will explain. So I said let's meet and we hear from them because. As legislators, we are their representatives. So why you petitioned? Uh, this struggle started, started last year, in July, after the concern from the traders around Nagugabo, seeing Chinese starting to open shops to compete with our members. Uh, furthermore, it brought other concerns when we show Egyptians hawking and even providing flasks on credit throughout the country. So when we went and engaged the Chinese, that's when we heard that already they have set up a factory in Mbali. So we got a group of leadership in the business community and toured the facility in Mbali. So when we reached there, the fact is we saw that there are certain processes are which are being done on some textiles like jeans. And later we discovered is that most of the raw materials is being imported in Uganda. But with information we had got, they had told us that they process cotton and make textiles here locally, but it was a false. Mm -hmm. uh, so through those engagements, we advised them that uh, we, the traders, we are willing to buy from them on condition they don't hooker and then even start distributing the gin throughout the country because it creates direct competition within our members and them. Uh, so they agreed, but unfortunately, what is happening currently in Nabugabo, they hired even workers now, so they are putting genes even on the street. So you find that I think they have a strategy of killing our businesses. And uh, when we try to address the Ministry of Trade, it's like we, as leaders, in the traders, we are not contented with the way the Ministry of Trade executes its mandate. It's like, I, I'm sorry to use the word, it's almost useless to that extent. So maybe the team which is there already is compromised, or maybe they hate traders, but we think they haven't done enough. So this one has taken almost enough, enough, enough uh, some good months since July last year. So even they have a petition, but you can you can imagine, even they have never invited us to discuss uh, such. Uh, furthermore, it's almost now three years when again we engaged the Minister of Finance about the concern on the taxes on textiles and garments. When they introduced the kilo system, of 3.5, I think it was a strategy of totally uh, discouraging us from importation. No one can pay taxes using this system and you can survive in business. So we had arguments like there is no way someone who is dealing in, in garments where you have now to sell clothes using the kilo measuring skill system. Totally that was impossible. Uh, furthermore, they advised that uh, within the East African community, they had agreed to promote local manufacturing industries that they can adopt the 30%. But when we, when we sent a team uh, to when we sent a team to Kenya, we discovered that Kenya is charging 25%, and then Kenya doesn't imply the withholding tax of 6%. Uh, secondly, uh, the VAT in Kenya is 16, not 18. Uh, so what has it impacted to our members? By the time we reach a container here, we have paid 20, uh, 24, that is uh, 18, 
and six, uh, and the six, and then the thirty-five. Sincerely, you cannot sell any cloth, and you remain with the smoke, anything, anything like a profit. Uh, so before we could maneuver, and you try to, uh, to 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 find other avenues, but we decided let us go clean, let us meet our tax obligation. So what has happened? That our customers who used to come from Rwanda, uh, some by the even Kenya, uh, some from Congo and South Sudan, have totally diverted, and almost we have donated the market to Kenya, because you cannot compete with the Kenyan when you even you imported from China. So the dollars, the, all the money which we could at least make the business a community a little bit healthier. It has been diverted to, to Kenya. So we think that the government misfired on this because it could enable Musoke bring like 10 containers. But now we fed it even with one container. So in, logically, they would have collected more taxes if the taxes were flexible because the demand could be bigger. Secondly, it could avail with more varieties on the market. For instance, uh, if Nitil produces a shirt and also we import from Turkey, from China, these Congolese, they, they love style. So even they can have, they could take more, 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 more pieces so it could boost business. But you find uh, that the government has been so reluctant uh, to handle uh, that challenge. The third, co the third concern was about the unfair implementation of a free system. Uh, with uh, a lot of enforcement, with the less sensitization, and given not considering the digital adoption and the ability of our members, who are a little bit uh, uh, illiterate, because we, we thought that the, the Uganda Revenue Authority could, for the meantime, stop being harsh and forcefully implementing this system to our traders who have a very great negative attitude towards the system because it has a concerns like in a case in a case there are these penalties where you you are charged around where you are charged around uh, uh, the six is a little bit fair uh, but if they find that the receipt you have tampered or with the machine or the machine has been faulty, they charge you 1,500 current points or they imprison you uh, not more than 10 years. Uh, so the, f uh, the current units is cost around 20,000. Uh, 20, That's around 30 million. For sure, <laughs> no one can survive in, in Chikubo. So even it has scared our members to enroll in the system. So our recommendation as CASITA, we request for the intervention of parliament to put on hold the implementation of the system and then let URA engage the traders, let URA respect the feedback and see other avenues of implementing system. What, the, what, our, mem what, what our, our traders are suggesting, why can't URA since our members purchase from local factories, mainly now who deal in Chikubo, why can't you reinforce this system to the manufacturers? By the time Musuke comes in Chikubo, I'm not inconvenienced. The VAT in, the VAT out, totally it complicates the whole system in Chikubo. And then furthermore, we re there is uh, that unfair, unfair competition, I think in my submission I presented it, the, the East African countries when I was submitting the other side. But mainly, mainly I think even which we didn't even hear, uh, when, which wasn't captured my, by my team, was another challenge of the, with the recovery fund, uh, which the parliament approved. Uh, it was somehow a very good strategy because the, the problem which we are facing currently that most of our members are closing businesses because of the COVID-19 effects. Uh, banks are auctioning their properties. 
they can no longer meet their bank obligations because the recovery fund had a system whereby you can access these loans at a very flexible rate, around 10 to 12. So they give you a recovery period of one year. You are able to clear the other loan areas and even stabilize or start something which can enable you in the future to start clearing this loan. But we have tried to, get, to engage Bank of Uganda, we have tried to engage Ministry of Finance, we have engaged all banking institutions, but I've never seen a single trader who has accessed that fund. So it's terrible there downtown, businesses are in a very tricky situation where your intervention will be highly respected. And to appreciate the traders who have come to bring a petition to us here at Parliament because they've got concerns. And these are critical concerns that have got to be listened to. We are going to push through this petition with the leadership of Parliament. And generally, our hope is that our colleagues on the other side will, will listen. Sometimes they, they pride themselves in the numbers that they do have. But it's not about politics. Yeah? These are critical issues that are affecting traders. And we must be able to listen to them every step of the way. They are raising critical concern. Foreigners that have saturated the market, they are doing, you know, retail trade, hawking, and, and so on. And they're saying, but wait a minute, in other countries it does not happen. So they're out of business because their space is being occupied. And we are not saying foreigners should not come to our country, but we've got to regulate all of these different issues. We, we must be concerned about our local operators, our local business persons, not just focusing on the foreign investors. They come, we give them free land, we give them tax waivers, we of late are guaranteeing them money, as you're hearing, and yet the local people are not cared for. It is wrong. There's no country that does that. I don't know why we do that. We must be different. We'd like to call on URA. Yes, you're doing all you can to hit your targets, but these people are saying they, they are not on the same page with you. This every system, the electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution, they're saying they don't understand it. They're saying it is complicating matters for them. They've got to have smartphones. They've got to have internet and all of these things. You see, one of the critical canons in tax collection, you've got to make it easy for people to pay taxes. When you make it hard, they will evade the taxes. They will not pay. So we are calling on URA as much as you can keep engaging these people, even if it means meeting them every week, because these are your partners, their stakeholders. Give them attention. The other day I saw there was a meeting. I don't know how often those meetings happen. You can't meet them once in a blue moon and move and you just want to enforce. Listen to them. They are raising these critical concerns. Address their concerns. That way you'll be on the same page. We, we keep hearing of people being exempted. Investors, there's proposals to invest to exempt them from certain taxes, stamp duty, and others. There's proposed tax waivers. We keep asking Ministry of Finance, give us a list of whether you want to, to waive taxes from businesses and the criteria you used. Because they keep saying some of these businesses and these business persons are heavily indebted. If we don't waive their taxes, their businesses are going to crumble. These people are indebted too. They've gotten loans from banks. What's good for the goods should be good for the Ganda. Gold exporters, they, I mean, they're not bothered. They don't pay taxes, billions of shillings. And we understand there's a directive to say, leave them alone. But why? Is it because, as we hear, it is actually government people that are, you know, doing this uh, gold exportation, so they don't want to pay taxes? That it is probably family members who are connected to powerful people in this country? Because otherwise, these things do not make sense. Ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, we need to, number one, fight corruption robustly, not just talking about it. We lose a lot of money to it because now URA is struggling because it's got to avail money for service delivery and so on. That's why they will dig deeper and deeper and deeper with all these new taxes, with all these heavy, high-handed enforcements. But you see, as a country, if we fight corruption, to which we lose over 10 trillion shillings a year, 
and we save that money. We'll not be burdening Ugandan taxpayers further. So we know what to do to save money. Let's cut down the wastages. Sometimes you see wastage of untold proportion. Let's deal with these issues. That way we'll not be bothering and burdening the taxpayer a lot more with new taxes, with this and the other, simply because we need money. And they're also saying, look, we pay taxes, but we don't see value for this tax money. They go to government hospitals, there's no medicine. So they've got to now go to a private one and pay money. So they're paying taxes, the little that's left with them, they take it to a private school for their child, a private hospital, the roads are in bad shape. We need to fix these things. You know, there are countries where people pay up to 50 or even 60 percent of their income in tax. But they're not complaining so much because there is service delivery. It's a different situation here. And that's why people are up in arms. They're saying, we pay our taxes, heavy taxes, but there's no service delivery. Why are we paying the taxes? Want to appreciate the traders who are out there protesting. Some have closed their shops and so on. It's your right to peacefully air out your concerns. And our hope is that police, as we have been hearing, are trying to force people, um, going through some operatives, open your shops and so on. It's their right to air out their concerns peacefully and within the law. Finally, as we have said severally, a sinking boat, a sinking boat affects everybody. And that's the situation we are grappling with. When we talk about these situations, some people think we are simply politicking. No, you'll all be affected. And somebody was saying, you see, some of those traders, when we are raising these concerns, they say, ah, this doesn't concern us. Well, it might not be all of them. Uh, maybe some are the ones that have that attitude. But everybody will be affected. It will come to your doorstep. Everybody will be affected. So let's join hands to see to it that we fix these challenges, these leadership challenges that we do have. That's where it stems from. And that way, our country will get better. So we're going to receive the petition, and uh, we are going to push it through for it to be discussed.